Hello, and um, I, I already said this before we officially started. I've been anxious for this kind of, for this meeting to happen. I mean, not specifically this meeting, but this kind of meeting. The first meetup related to this community that I organized was in 2003. So 18 years ago, a long time ago, I'm really old. Even if Drago makes it sound good, it, I, I'm old. I, I feel old on a day like today. However, of course, I'm happy that uh, this is happening and that it is that there's so many people because when we had the first live meetup in a room together about this about this topic, we were five people in Sao Paulo, five people. So today with maybe 30, 40 people, this is much better, I think, much more enjoyable. Um, but let me tell you a little bit about what I think. I, I will try to, to, uh, to um, to give you an idea what what the roots of this movement are. Yeah? And of course, uh, you are not supposed to believe in anything that I say. Um, uh, we don't have to, you don't have to agree with what I'm saying. That's not necessary. And um, I, I know that as a founder, one of the founders of this community, it might seem that I'm, I should know everything, but I don't. Uh, there are many things that we are still discovering um, uh, Diana mentioned my, my colleague Silke Hartmann, who joined the movement 11 or so years ago, and we have been we have discovered so many things since then. And over the last couple of months, even Silke and I, together with Diana and Victor, have discovered so many things that uh, clear it's it's clear that we don't know everything about this. But some things we have figured out about beta. Okay, and I will try to to relate to something that Diana said because she she talked about problems that organizations have, right? Organizatia problema, something like that. I heard that. I think huh? something. Huh? I heard the two words. And not maybe in this order on this, but yeah. organizatia is that something yeah. like organization? Yeah. Right. Organizations have problems. Can we? I think we agree on that. Even if you should, you shouldn't believe in anything that I say. But organizations have problems. Okay. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. If we talk about organizations' problems, we might say, okay, there's too too little learning going on or too little, too little innovation. And work is not fun, little fun, very little fun. And the quality might suck of the product or we are not in time, we are too, we are too expensive, you know, cost is too high. So organizations have all kinds and people are, there's bullying going on and what other problems might organizations have in Croatia and beyond? I'm not sure. What kind of problems do you have? <clears throat> Dragon, maybe? <laughs> Strong uh, hierarchy, basically. Yeah, we are, yeah. We are too much people are not skilled enough. People are not skilled. They are stupid, stupid people. Stupid people, not skilled, incompetent, and they come too late, too late to work, too late to work, and, and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of problems, right? So many problems. And here's the thing we're trying to fix them. That's the first mistake. The problem is that over the last hundred years or so, we have trying to fix these things. And the problem with these problems is that they aren't even problems. Right? What are they? Drago, do you know? You're good with well, me. We can say cha challenges, but it doesn't change anything. <laughs> they are fucking symptoms. It's like, it's like when you're sick and you have, yes, you have a problem here on this that shows on the skin. Sometimes you you put a cream on it, cortisone or something like that, and it so it it fixes the symptoms on the skin on the surface. You know, they are powerful. There's powerful medicine uh, available that fixes symptoms, but not necessarily the illness. So imagine that this is a lake. This is the surface of a lake, and the so-called problems, which are in fact symptoms, are like I like the leaves of a water lily. Do you know what water lilies are? It's a well, but... we own okay, good yeah. water lilies. <laughs> water roses, we call them in German. I don't know, I don't know why. But one plant produces hundreds and hundreds of leaves. This is the this is the bottom of the lake, and this is the surface. Imagine this is the water, and we're looking from the top. We're looking from here. Yeah. We're looking on the surface of the we're looking on the surface, and there are hundreds and hundreds of non-problems, right? They are symptoms. And we see all these water lily leaves kind of symptoms. Yeah? Here's the thing, one plant, one water lily, here's the root at the bottom of the lake, you know? Uh, it produces hundreds and hundreds of leaves. Now we are trying to, 
to fix the symptoms that will never work. There's a guy, an American complexity theorist, Russell Eckhoff, he explained this so beautifully. There's a huge difference between symptoms and problems. Organizations have many symptoms, few problems. And here's the additional trick. Problems, they are attracted to each other. They huddle and mingle and they form, they stick together. So problems form messes. Messes. Very few messes huddle together as problems, or the problems huddle together in very few, one or two or three mess messes per organization, not more. And the rest is all symptoms. Of course, there are things like stupid people, you know, assholes. Do you know assholes at your job? Yeah. That's not Never an organizational problem. It's not an organizational problem. But if assholes show asshole behavior, then it's a symptom of a fucking of a of a problem that's underneath. You got it? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> this reason here. It's for this reason that Toyota, a great beta organization, they developed a concept that is the five. You have probably heard of it. The five times why method to drilling down. You know, you observe something. Oh, we have two little uh, learning and innovation going on. Why is that so? And then you find an answer, but it's not really the answer to the problem. It's still very superficial. You find an answer that is maybe located here. So you have to ask why again and drill down and drill down by asking why and honestly answering and discussing, is this really an answer to the question? And after five times why, they say uh, at Toyota, asking, after asking five times why is that so, then you might be facing the problems or the messes, okay? But here's the thing. The best thing, the good thing about organizations eh, is that all, almost all organizations are in the same fucking mess. Can I swear? In, is it okay for Croatian audience to swear? A little bit. A little bit. Bravo is on my side. That's good. Yeah. We, most organizations are in the same mess. That's the good thing about it. And the mess has many names. It's like evil, you know, the evil pyramid. You can call it command and control. That's a classic name from the management sciences. Command and control. It's a way of building and steering organization to command and steer it and control it from the top down. Yeah? Most organizations are built like this. This is the standard of organizational design, one might say, of the way we think about work and organizations. So this is it. Most organizations are command and control organizations. We might call them alpha organizations. And that's the mess. If you look at it, don't believe in anything that I say. I'm trying to invite you here to think afresh about organization you know, problems and, and matters and messes. Command and control produces, I would say, all these problems and many, many more, hundreds more in your organization, growth problems, recruiting problems, <clears throat> uh, technical problems, you cannot agree. Uh, your top managers are behaving like assholes. They cannot all be assholes, but they behave like assholes. Yeah, is that okay to say that in Croatian? Yeah. At least in German companies, most top managers behave like assholes, not because they are, but because it makes total sense in their current model of command and control. Yeah, here's the thing. Management the social technology here. Command and control model of managing was invented almost a hundred years ago by Frederick Winslow Taylor. He's the, he's one of the in, in inventors of this, not the only one, but he, engineers around hundred years ago, they invented this kind of model. Also a hundred years ago, approximately, a different way of organizing was invented. You might call it beta. Yep. There is an alternative to command and control. Here's the thing. This model worked very well in the industrial age until the 1970s when I was born. I'm very old. Uh, no, condensed. Yeah. When I, condensed Niels, was born, uh, this got out of fashion. This worked very well in the industrial age. Slow moving market, not, much, not many surprises, not much competition. I think you can imagine this for your countries. I can imagine it well for Germany and for the United States, for example. You might, if you imagine how how little competition there was in Croatia, for example, in certain markets, then you can imagine why this worked so well. Very little competition, very little. Very highly protected markets, uh, very loose and, and stable markets. And in that world, this worked well enough. It still created a lots, of, lots of evil symptoms. For example, male domination in management. That's another fucking problem that we're facing, right? Too many men in top management positions. In Germany, it's still a big problem. It's also 
don't believe in what I say, think for yourself. You're invited to think for yourself in these meetups. But I would argue that too many men in top management position is also just a symptom of command and control bullshit models because men do that very well, okay? Don't believe in anything that, uh, that I say, of course. You might question yourself. This is not the kind of movement where somebody says how, to, how things are. Yeah? We want to discover, we want to understand. We want to first, do I still have time? How much time do I have, Diana? How much time have I been talking? Uh, just just take the time because I think yeah. this is uh, yeah, maybe essential, I give it... essential also for everything else what will come in the sessions. Okay, okay. Yeah. So I take another I five to seven minutes or so maybe. Yeah. Take so your here's time. the thing. Here's the thing. Um, in two, in 1998, in England, they founded a research group that tried to understand this model. And the research question, it was a real, they took that very seriously. They, uh, they articulated a research question, <clears throat> which was, how does organizing without budgeting, budgeting is very common in this model. You need budgets to run command and control bullshit organizations, okay? The, this bullshit model. You need plans and budgets. Or in command and control, uh, for example, you develop your software in waterfall method, you know, very command and control, very organized with lots of planning and steering and so on. So over 20 years ago, these guys from the United uh, from from England, they asked, "How would organizing without budgeting look like?" And they found this model. Okay, that was that happened between 1998 and 2003. They found out how this model works. These these people, three directors, and then I came along. I was number five <laughs> in 2003. We found out that there are 12 principles that describe this model and this model. So the Beta Codex still maintains that structure. 12 principles to describe a good model of organizing and a terrible model of organizing today. Yeah? The beta codex spells out the alpha codex as well. This model works with lots of planning. This works with preparation. This is centralized. This is decentralized and so on and so on. So the principles define the models. It took five or six years to figure out this model. And it was identified. This is very interesting, I think, by looking at actual companies that were running this model, like Handelsbanken. Handelsbanken in Sweden, biggest bank in Sweden, 12,000 people or so now. So it's a, it's a large bank in Scandinavia. They had been doing this since 1971. And my colleagues from the Beyond Budgeting Movement went to visit them, understood their model, and figured out large parts of the models thank to, thank to, thanks to Handelsbank. So this is how it was discovered in practice. At a company like Toyota, you find this model. At DM Drogeriemarkt, a German retail company, you find this model. WL Gore, Southwest Airlines, Bullsorg recently came along. Uh, you know, there, there are companies that have this model and have done it for decades. So we know how this works and we knew it since 2003. The problem, and this is why we need this meetup. Do you see what the problem is? Most organizations still run this bullshit model from the industrial age. Worked well enough in the industrial age, doesn't work so well because it produces more and more evil symptoms, bad symptoms, lack of com competitivity. You, people don't want to work there. Quality is a problem. In a lack of innovation. Oh, Kinds of all kinds of what we call problems, of course, are system, symptoms of this model most of the time. Yeah. So here's the challenge. Still, and this hasn't changed in the last 20 years, most organizations are run on command and control on alpha principle. Management by command and control, by fear and planning and steering from the top, horrific organizational model. And it's not Frederick Taylor who is to blame, who invented this model 100 years ago. We are to blame because we are still running on an outdated organizational technology. What we call leadership today is usually not leadership. It is still command and control bullshit management, heroes at the top, people who suck or who fail or who do not understand what they are doing and not because they suck, but because the model is so bad. So here we are. We have to understand the model. And here's this new thing. We now also know how to transform any organization from here to there. We know how to do it. This is new. Um, Diana mentioned open space beta. That is the approach. So we now know how this model works. We know how this model works and why it sucks. We understand that we cannot, we cannot fix the symptoms. We have to fix the mess, the alpha mess of organizing. 
And now we also know how to transform any organization within, this is the best thing, 90 days or so. Don't believe in anything what I say. So now we know how to transform organizations, how to help organizations transform. And it took a long time to get this. And the theory to understand, you know, how this organization runs. Because of course, most of us are used to work in these organizations. Some of us have run this kind of organization. Some have made a career in this kind of organization. Diana, I think you worked at Bosch. Oh boy, right? So uh, we all know how this works, but this is rare, right? We don't often see it. I would bet that there is a beta organization in Croatia somewhere. I don't know what kind of company, it might be a company or a hospital or a public organization, I don't know, but I'm sure that there is somewhere in, in, the, uh, in, in, in your region, let's say, uh, there are beta organizations. Very few maybe, but there are some crazy beta organizations. But here's the thing, it's not very common. And some of us find it hard to believe. And that is also part why, why these, um, these encounters matter so that we can you know make sure that we understand how this works that we can uh, find figure out individual learn the logic of this model this the logic of this model we know it very well and it's very it makes us cynical sometimes right drago yes yeah sometimes we 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 tend to believe there's no better world this is all, the all there is it's terrible you know the world of work the world of organization is terrible no no there is an alternative is has existed for a long long time for a couple of weeks now, I have come to call this the Follettian model as well. Not just beta, but the Follettian model, because the founder, the inventor, was <coughs> Mary Parker Follett in American 100 years ago. You can read our latest white paper, number 17, about this. Yeah? So this is the purpose of this meetup, to discuss. Is this, first you have to figure out, is this interesting? Do you want to understand problems or do you just love symptoms? Symptoms are beautiful, you know? Can, you can talk endlessly about symptoms and never solve anything, it's beautiful. So. First, we must decide, do we want to solve the mess? Then we have to understand alpha better to understand why it's horrible and how it can be overcome. We must understand it, sadly, you know, we, from an from a analytical point of view. We must understand this model and then we must understand transformation and then make it happen and create a better world. Thank you very much.